All right, welcome to our uPortal open source support briefing uh, for Q3 2021. So we're going to be covering the first uh, three quarters of this year. Uh, I think we our last briefing, uh, I think was Q3 last year. Uh, so we're going to kind of skip over Q4 uh, and just focus on 2021 um, holidays and, and all. Uh, so our our um, agenda today is we'll do a quick review of the program, just talking uh, some a few numbers, not many, uh, and then we'll dive into where UPortal is uh, today, go over a couple of the, the details, uh, in particular um, release notes. We will look at the steering committee updates, uh, elections, and some of the other efforts that are being driven um, through the committee. Uh, touch on a few events, um, and then lastly, just uh, have an open discussion on, on training. Okay. Before I really get started, though, uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself in case you don't know who I am. My name is Benito Gonzalez. I'm the software architect and, and current manager for the open source support project as related to uPortal. Chris Beach uh, is uh, our Unicon developer um, who is also working quite a bit on uPortal tasks. Uh, and, and we've also managed to bring in Mike Sulzenberger, another Unicon developer. Um, his focus right now has really been around um, migrating portlets uh, to uh, Java 11. Um, and we'll touch on that you know, further down when we discuss a roadmap. So our team, um, Chris is going to be hopping in uh, a little bit and um, kind of handling uh, a couple of slides for us today. Sound good, Chris? That works. All right. Uh, so the, the first thing to start off with, uh, we have 16 subscribers, um, and from the uPortal community, you know, kind of thank you because you're really uh, driving, uh, helping support a lot of the development um, with Unicon being one of the main contributors. Uh, you know, 2020 and 2021 with COVID, we know that a lot of um, institutions had to make some uh, hard decisions on what services they could fund and who they uh, interacted with um, and and vendors that they continued uh, you know working with um, and and I know there's been a, a couple of folks out there who are no longer subscribers but wish they could be and and we appreciate that as well um, but we we have been fortunate enough to retain a, a good number of subscribers even pick up one or two so again, Thank you for keeping the, the program alive. It really makes a difference uh, for, for you, Portal, and these open source projects. Um, and, and what does the uh, OSS program do? Well, for 2021, looking at uPortal, uPortal Start, and some other projects, uh, this program, try, uh, along with other small projects that come through Unicon related to uPortal. We're about 78% of the commits um, across that. Now we have a, a few other folks um, that have, have done a lot of good work and also uh, supply pull requests and do other things in the community, not just coding. And that's greatly appreciated uh, as well. But um, uh, at least from my perspective, this program really drives a lot of the work that continues in a lot of these open source projects. So, you know, that's that's kind of the number. Some portlets, you know, it's like 100% uh, things that we do. Um, along with commits, you know, we're also driving a lot of the releases as well. Uh, generally, I think Chris has been cutting quite a few releases lately. So. Um, but it's all, always nice to see other folks um, cut releases as uh, I think Jonathan just uh, cut a release uh, earlier this week. I, uh, besides our um, sustaining engineering hours, uh, driving a lot of changes, we also get changes when we receive Zendesk tickets. 
uh, there's, there's both support assistance. Occasionally, support assistance tickets will drive the creation of new documentation. Someone will ask, hey, how do I do this? Uh, such as um, remove J groups. Uh, we'll write up some documentation and uh, share it with the community. Um, uh, similarly, consulting assistance hours, a lot of times that will drive development. Um, and so it's, ex it's exciting to see those come in. Um, uh, uh, but uh, this year we haven't had a, an avalanche of tickets. Uh, we've had only about 38. Some of those are answered, you know, within a few hours. Some of those take a couple of weeks and some of them kind of drag on, especially as they turn into consulting assistance requests that you know, require us to break out um, a big chunk of hours to, to do some work. Um, and, and luckily, Chris has been able to, to really manage a, a big chunk of that. Chris, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, just that you know, this is this is one of the benefits of the program, right? Is that you can you can come and and work with us for general support, um, you know, and then if we if you want us to help you uh, specifically dig into your install, if there's an issue going on, uh, we're able to transition to that um, and and kind of be there for you as um, as you're working through your um, you know the the U portal issues, whether they be upgrades or new features or whatnot. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is the last slide in this section. Um, just to kind of recap uh, the, the program in the sense that uh, with COVID, we also are at the beginning of, of COVID, we, we had a lot of work that was uh, kind of stacked up and we had a long backlog. Uh, we, we've lost some key members to our team uh, previous year or so. Uh, so it took us a while to to get to the point where you know we could tread water. So I think it's really been this year, 2021, where we're able to really catch up on some outstanding tickets. We don't have a very big backlog anymore. And um, it's really nice to, to be able to just drive forward and really uh, start looking at um, additional work we can do through sustained engineering. So again, thanks. So diving into <clears throat> uPortal, that's related projects. So one of the important things to, to share with you is that uh, the repos have been moved. Um, now GitHub will still honor your repo, repo URLs that are pointing to things like uh, github.com slash jsig slash uPortal or uPortal.start. Um, but it is now officially in, uh, U portal project. So uh, if you get the chance, go ahead and, and look at your local repos, check the URLs and, and consider updating those URLs just to make sure you're pointing to the right location. Um, this was a big effort. We had well over a dozen, closer to two dozen repos that we moved out of JSIG. Uh, and, and sorted them out into uPortal project and other spaces. Um, well, GitHub calls them organizations. Uh, so here's the three organizations that we want to use for uPortal. Now, um, I, I just want to note there are one or two, you know, slightly related repos that still remain in the JSIG organization. Um, we didn't migrate every single thing. Uh, just because those are used by other JSIG projects. Uh, so that might be um, something to keep in mind. But moving forward, we have our uPortal project, which is where our current um, uPortal, uPortal start, the web components, and all the most commonly used port, uh, portlets exist. We have uPortal contrib. This is um, an organization or space where if you come up with a related project to uPortal and you want the community to look at it and maybe even consider it uh, to be adopted uh, by Aperio, um, that's the uPortal contrib space. Uh, but you know that's kind of wide open. Uh, 
for any related repos. I've created a repo that just has a handful of scripts to help migrating from uPortal 4 to uPortal 5 in massaging the um, data sets. So that's a repo that's in there. And there's another repo to help with configuring Tomcat if you are using uPortal 4. Uh, actually, it was written back before uPortal 5 uh, to help um, check that Tomcat configuration is, uh, is is implemented correctly inside of um, something that's expe a Tomcat that's expecting you portal for. And there's a couple of other projects as well. Um, and then kind of the last organization is uPortal Attic. Uh, this is where projects, let's say they're not going to die there, but this is where we say, you know, we're really not actively working on this. And uPortal has been around for what, we're getting close to two decades. And there are some repos where you know their their value is is um, minimal, and so those are the things we're going to start moving over to the attic uh, in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, another thing that has been requested, and we we know it's a concern, and that is documentation. Um, and one of the biggest challenges that uh, we've run across uh, has been where do we put the documentation. Uh, the order is a little bit off. uPortal 4 probably should have been the first box here, but um, we certainly have a lot of uh, great information in uPortal 4. A good chunk of it's outdated, um, but there are still significant portions of the documentation that still apply. Uh, if you're Googling and you need something, you can't find it in uPortal or uPortal start repos, there's a good chance there's most of your answer in the uPortal 4 manual. Uh, that being said, when we had uPortal and uPortal Start, um, uPortal Start created with uh, the you know, advent of uPortal 5 documentation kind of ended up in both repos. It wasn't clear at which point um, it should be added and then even in which repo. Uh, you know, there's some arguments that it should all go in one, should all go in the other or it should be split by audience. But then even when you do that, there was some overlap. Um, so it was it was always a challenging decision just to figure out where you're gonna put stuff. So we've kind of decided, and I think this was uh, something um, that we finalized through the, the steering committee, uh, as we're going to move the documentation into the uPortal uh, GitHub IO project. Uh, we've got a few things in there. Um, there's certainly the structure that's similar to the Portal 4 manual that's starting to be built out. Uh, it's just a matter of finding time to do that. With holidays coming up and as we start uh, seeing more time to spend on, on this effort, uh, I'm hoping, you know, we'll really in earnest, you know, dig into this and see a lot of things move by Q1. Of, of next year. So that's the plan. Um, there's already a couple of things in this new repo that uh, isn't anywhere else. For example, how to um, turn off J groups. I know that's that's been a, a thorn on some people's sides. So, uh, and then just to recap um, <clears throat> the releases for this year for uPortal in particular, we've had three releases. Uh, I'm not focusing on the portlets too much while we've had some cleanups. Um, there hasn't been a lot of new features in the portlets. Web components are the opposite. There's a lot of small things that have been happening in, in, in our web component repos. Uh, but um, I just wanted to focus on uh, ePortal change logs and releases. So early this year, we had 590. Um, the main thing here, uh, uh, to realize, well, first, if you don't know in uh, GitHub, you can go to uh, releases page and see all this information. Uh, those uh, hashtag numbers are links to pull requests. So you could uh, dive into some details if you need to. Um, these release notes are created manually, but we've been pretty efficient at, at knocking them out. Um, what I'm not going to show are the chores. So below the fixes block, there's a chores block. And in all the releases, they're generally very long uh, and, and dominate um, the release notes. Uh, 
But essentially, what's happening in those chores are small things such as upgrading dependencies uh, with new releases. Uh, if, if a dependency is a real challenge to upgrade, it might move into uh, a fix or, or some other area if it, it is addressing something significant. But I uh, just want to let you know there's, in each one of these releases, there's a big block of, of chores you can review. Uh, in 5.9, uh, we found some query statements uh, that were not prepared statements. So uh, they were somewhat inefficient. So performance gains were, were, were made by changing those to prepared statements. Um, statistics portlet needed an upgrade. Uh, it was kind of broken. Um, and then we had um, one of our subscribers who needed to customize a couple of values around uh, portlet thread pools and um, an executor. So those were just kind of turned into uh, values that could be driven through uportal.properties. So if you find that there is a certain area and in, you have to copy the bean into your overwrites context just to set a value, let us know and maybe we can uh, find a way to just turn those into some imported properties that can be defined in your properties files. Uh, and then we also did some smart LDAP work, uh, adding support back for attribute mapper. Uh, some fixes down there. Um, there were some problems with the import export. So if you're in 5.8 and you are having problems with your import export, uh, consider upgrading. Um, there was the search limit issue and um, tab groups were not actually implemented in Responder and thanks to an engagement with the UC Irvine um, and their desire to have tab groups in their portal, uh, we were able to bring in tab groups into Responder again. Uh, so for this release, we did have quite a few contributors um, that got rolled into this release. So it was nice to see so many um, folks, a couple of new uh, people as well. Again, in, in 510, there are a, a couple of the new folks again. We love to see that. Uh, the main thing here is the uh, for a new feature is, is cast URL customization from a portal request. Really, the this one was uh, so that drove this to become a release. If you're not familiar with semantic versioning, if you add a new feature, then you make uh, you increment the uh, minor number in your release. Um, so if we didn't have this new feature, then because everything else is is a fix documentation or a chore, it would have been uh, a bug release. But we. Yeah, there was a new feature. So, uh, but looking at the um, the fixes, uh, there was a problem with sitemap that's been around for a while. There was a calculation like how to split things up across the columns. So if you've seen some issues with your sitemap or wondered why it acts up sometimes, um, there's a fix in there uh, in, in 510. Um, there was uh, a potential null return from, uh, that's not a very good description, but I believe it had to do with the group service. Um, <clears throat> there was uh, uh, an issue with the URL being, uh, the direct URL being displayed for a particular portlet in a form input field when it could have just been uh, text. Um, see, is there anything else that really stands out in the fixes? Um, the CAS proxy configuration, if you're using CAS proxy, um, that was significant in a, a, a fix. Um, I think that's a, the, the main thing is uh, just a bunch of small fixes that we started seeing were able to address, you know, things like in the stats portlets and then in tap groups. Okay. And then our latest release, 5.11. Um, you know, that this one's a, a new feature around memory and, and, and database health checks. Uh, so that was interesting. 
um, a couple of different subscribers uh, were interested in, in improving what they got back from a health check as opposed to just a, you know, uh, 200, everything looks good or a, a failed response. Now we have some additional information that could potentially be parsed and used uh, for analytics or for operations. Um, <clears throat> for the fixes, uh, the localization table, that was a, a big performance improvement. I should say relatively big performance improvement. Um, it wasn't quite working right, so it was producing a bunch of subqueries uh, when looking at, when loading um, preferences for users uh, because it wanted to go and check and see if there was any localizations around those. Uh, so that was kind of nice. All in all, uPortal is, is quite performant and leverages caching quite a bit. Uh, so the, the, the significance of that fix um, may be lost on, on you, uh, depending on the size of your users. Uh, so I, I don't think it's, it's really um, a huge improvement overall, but it is, is significant when you're dealing with uh, a large user base. You know, Chris, do you want to talk about the last fix, 2283? Sure. This is a, a feature that was put in in a um, fairly recent release, uh, might have been last year. Um, just the ability for um, for adopters to put a token um, inside of portlet definitions, and then as the portlet is being displayed through the U, uh, through the API or through the UX. Um, those tokens will be replaced uh, with a personalized value, right? So if you have like a, some sort of a student ID or something that you want um, in the text of a portlet, you'd be able to do that. Um, and this was just as, um, as the personalization effort was continuing, we got it into a release. Um, it was just um, hardening that, um, that feature a little bit. Right. And those personalization tokens are based on user attributes, right? They can be, yes. Yeah, so it'd be things like you could personalize by putting uh, the user's name. Um, uh, but another common use is to use, uh, as you mentioned, an, an ID and maybe drop it in the middle of a URL. Um, I believe that's that's how I've seen it used. Yeah, if, if folks are interested, uh, we we were able to put out some documentation on there, uh, on the on the doc site as well as um, if you turn on uh, if you enable this and then you turn on the debug logging, you'll be able to see all of your available personalization tokens, um, and um, and then you can actually bring more in through um, custom claim handling. Great. Right. Uh, you know, um, kind of going back to the health check, here's here's what you received now. So if you go to uPortal slash health dash check without any parameters, you're just going to get the same functionality we had before, uh, which is going to you know really be your, your code like 200s. Um, but if you add in the parameter detail and you 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 Either go you add memory, DB, or all ALL. Um, these are some of the values uh, you can uh, expect to see. Um, so the database health checker is going to go and hit the database and um, make sure that it's responding. Uh, this works for our typical uh, connection pool that's built in. However, I will give you a warning if you're using <clears throat> Um, the, you're, if you're defining your connection pool in Tomcat, uh, it, it, it doesn't quite work for that yet. Um, so what it's trying to do is actually create um, a connection um, outside the connection pool. Uh, so that's something we'll, that as an, that's going to be an enhancement that we'll see soon. I know there's only two schools that um, define their connection pools in Tomcat that, that we've worked with. Um, there's also the memory health check where we go through and we just uh, see what's what's going on in there. Um, uh, and, and a quick note, that thing that says detail, that attribute is uh, just um, what those values are. 
So if you had specified detail equals all, um, you would see any block and it would include um, the detail name if you just wanted that specific um, value. Uh, and then it's quite easy. There's an interface for this health check. Um, so it's quite easy to extend it, and add your own checkers. And, and if you do do that, um, please consider sharing your code uh, if it's generic enough um, with a community, because I think um, you know it'd be great to, to leverage a few more uh, checks in here. All right, cruising right along. <clears throat> so now we're going to focus on the ePortal Steering Committee. It's kind of a, a new feature that we're going to be covering in the briefings and just give you an update of what's been going on there. Uh, so first of all, we've had elections. Uh, people are elected to the ePortal Steering Committee for two years. Um, on the left side, those are our four current members are in the middle of their term. Um, actually, poor Jim Helwig is just a perpetual member. I don't, I don't know that he even has a, a two-year term. Uh, <laughs> Jim, are you on the call? Do you have anything to say about that? I see him on the call. I, I'm a, uh, you poor, uh, I'm the board liaison. That's right. <laughs> a non, non-voting member. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> um, on the, the right, we have our uh, results for our new election. So welcome Aaron Grant and Chris Beach. Uh, you know, Chris again is part of the team. And um, I felt, I was glad he, he joined because uh, he does a lot and it was uh, great to see him uh, in the first call uh, contributing along with, uh, with uh, everyone else. Um, and then Julian and I were reelected. Um, so that was nice. It's, um, it's a it's a great committee. Uh, we do a lot of a lot of stuff there. Uh, so the U Portal Steering Committee um, is going to be sending out a couple surveys. Uh, we'll send it out, um, you know, to the to the user base on the dev and users mailing list, as well as the Twitter. Um, and currently, we're looking at two surveys, uh, and we'd really encourage folks, um, subscribers, and you know, if you're if you're listening to this and you're not a subscriber, it's it's really anyone who has an interest in new portal, right? Um, we're looking at a survey around the current details of um, of new portal adopters, right? Like, what's your version? Are you clustering? What kind of portlets are you using? Are you interested in web components? Are you using them? Those kind of things. Um, and then another survey we are um, looking to send out as a steering committee is what are the potential improvements um, that you would like to see in new portal? Um, you know, if if you kind of had your druthers on a roadmap, what would you what would you prioritize? Is there a feature that is either holding you back or would just be really nice uh, before being able to adopt you portal? That would be a, a great um, vehicle to to highlight that feature. Um, so when you see those surveys, please just take a few minutes. Um, and you know, if even if you're not like the lead in your department. Uh, consider still taking the survey, right? You can just note it in there. Um, all information is welcome as we are working to really just uh, uh, get a pulse on, on where the community is at with, their, with the current setup and with potential improvements. And I can take this slide as well. The, one of the other things that we talked about on the steering committee um, is this idea of, of making some more robust uh, testing efforts um, and putting that into the repositories and into adopter flows, uh, specifically around kind of end-to-end testing, so user experience and API testing um, against a running U Portal start instance. Um, and conceptually, we're kind of looking at these five phases, but it's it's very fluid, um, and we're really working to have community engagement around this, right? I mean, it was in the steering committee that we were bringing it up. Um, Unicon is going to be doing some work on this and we would love to see um, the community uh, join forces, if you will, right? I mean, that's how we make this pro um, this application strong is, is when the community um, is able to um, enhance the efforts as well. Um, 
So the first one, we're just going to work on a proof of concept. Right now, we're looking at Playwright uh, being the tool that we will use for the proof of concept. Um, we haven't heard a whole lot of other tools out there that people were like, this would be really cool. But if you have one, please let us know um, so we can, we can work to you know, kind of get started on the right foot. We've used Playwright before. We like it. Um, but it's not uh, by any means the only tool, and it, it's quite possibly not the right tool. Um, it's just the one that we know works well at this point. Uh, the plan is to run it against you, Portal Start, um, and you should be able to download uPortal Start and turn on uPortal, and then the test should all run, um, is, is kind of that goal. Uh, we'd like to tie it into GitHub Actions, and this is really to make the, the, the uPortal as, a, as an application um, that much more robust. So when there's pull requests come in, it comes in, and then on primary branches, the commits that happen, uh, we would want this testing to be run so we can see quickly, um, kind of a fail fast kind of thing, that if we do a dependency upgrade or a feature enhancement, um, and if that starts to break something, we will know a lot sooner um, in the development cycle. Uh, then the effort to get a smoke test set up, right? So when you, when you do an upgrade or when we do a release, we're going to be able to run this smoke test of API testing um, uh, suites, and, and it'll cover some of the primary flows in uPortal start, and it's going to be used against the quick start uh, data set. Um, so again, this is, this is what you should be able to download from the community repository, run it, and it should be able to work and give that confidence level that, yes, indeed, uPortal is working as expected. Um, but it's not meant to cover every flow, right? And just the amount of time um, and effort that would take to just make sure that every UX component is in place as expected, uh, we just don't have um, the hours to be able to, to keep that up. Uh, number four is actually where, where this really starts to become um, important, right? Where, where when you want to customize uPortal for your instance to be able to allow this API testing to still work. And this is where community involvement is going to be really key to say, well, you know, this, uh, you know, as we stand up the proof of concept and the smoke test, it'd be really helpful if the tests were set up in this way because I want to be able to run this test or I want to be able to turn off this ability in the testing so I'd be able to customize it to my install and leverage the test. So with the theory that um, if or when you do a uPortal upgrade against your customized data set, you'd still be able to run these tests, possibly with turning some tests off and new tests you've created, uh, to get that level of confidence that uPortal is working. Um, and then kind of as a going forward um, concept, we'd like to, um, to have people, whenever they do a pull request, right, I mean, there's always that, that little checkbox in there, you know, did you bring you put tests in, which could be like unit tests or integration tests, but also start thinking about, could I have a test in here that would be more of an API or a UX testing, right? And so as we look towards more of the web component mentality and REST APIs, this would be a great, um, a great launch point to say, hey, I've just built out this new REST endpoint or I've enhanced it. I'll go ahead and put um, a Playwright end-to-end -end test in there. Um, so this feature will continue to be, you know, um, covered as we as we continue our testing efforts and release efforts, um, you know, in the coming in the coming commits and, and releases. All right, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Another thing the steering committee is talking about is um, a public demo site. Uh, more details to come. We're still kind of uh, working out uh, where this is going to be hosted, what it's going to look like, and related to this is a refresh of um, Quick Start. And I think once all these things kind of get pulled together, uh, we'll hopefully have a, a big announcement um, in, in a quarter or two. So uh, not a lot of details at this point, but something um, to keep an eye out for. Uh, and, and the last thing in this section is the portal uh, community roadmap. 
Um, here's a page where I discuss what the categories are and kind of through this roadmap together. Um, the preferences API kind of um, wasn't finalized in Q3. Uh, our main focus with our sustained engineering hours from the Unicon side in this program's um, concern is around the uh, upgrade to Java 11. Um, Mike Sulzenberger has really just owned that aspect. Uh, nothing's been pushed out yet because it's going to require a lot of changes with the core uh, uPortal app and, and potentially with uPortal Start as well. And most, more than likely, while the work will be, uh, I think, mostly done soon, um, we won't actually see that implemented or part of a release until uPortal 6. Uh, there's, there's a lot of compatibility uh, on the portlet side, uh, but it looks like uPortal itself might uh, require enough changes that we're gonna have to wait for um, the next major upgrade, but a significant amount of that work has been done. Uh, and then at you know the previous slide where we talked about documentation where we kind of did that restructuring, um, mostly that was just making decisions uh, and, and now we need to start moving things around. Um, but the key was now that we've, we've got um, some goals uh, nailed down, I think this uh, will go quite quickly. What we're expecting in Q4, uh, again, the holidays are, are, are missing. <laughs> messy things up, let me rephrase that, are going to impact this, <clears throat> but we really want to modernize um, Quick Start and, and just kind of uh, another effort um, we'd like to see is revamp our, our website, you know, official website. So that's not uPortal as a website, but um, our informational website. Uh, things kind of will get moved around a little bit. Uh, like I said, the preferences API will, will kind of get pushed back to Q4, maybe potentially even to Q1. Um, but if you want to discuss any of these topics or uh, you know, try, try to get a new topic um, or new effort on the roadmap, that'd be great. Uh, the way we run our OSS uPortal uh, program is our sustaining engineering hours really are supposed to be focused on roadmap items. Um, you know, bug fixes are important too, uh, but when it comes to enhancements, we really uh, are, are trying to uh, focus on roadmap items as opposed to just, you know, a random cool idea showing up and then us knocking it out. Um, something we hadn't been doing uh, a few years or last couple of years, but we're certainly uh, refocusing now, so. Um, an interesting thing, and this is a little bit of pie in the sky, so we might need to, to review this and update it, and things like uh, converting portlets to web components. It's not um, that we were going to do all the portlets. It was just looking at a few portlets uh, that would be good candidates to be rewritten as web components. Um, let's see, anything else that's... Uh, important here to touch on. Oh, I, we've had a couple of, of subscribers ask about upgrading Spring to um, the latest version. We're, we're a major version behind. And that's something that's a lot easier to do in, uh, in the portlets um, because they're a much smaller code base. But um, uh, we're going to give that, um, you know, the old college try uh, in Q2. I'm pretty sure it'll leak into Q3, uh, but that's that's when we expect to really give it um, give it a go. Okay. Um, so for community events, uh, I don't have any word on. Um, open a perio. Let me just jump in, uh, Benito. Um, I think in the upcoming newsletter, there will be a call volunteers to help with the planning committee. Um, so we do encourage folks. It'd be great if have a one or two people from the uPortal community that wanted to help out with planning. Okay, great. And um, usually, open a perio is in the summer or you know, June, um, and I believe. Uh, that's probably still going to be the target, and uh, I believe we're still looking at remote. Is that correct? Do you, do you have any insights on that? 
I believe, I think the, uh, um, I think it will be like remote first. Cool. So as we get more information, definitely we'll have more details by the next briefing. We've also had some success and a lot of fun with uh, ePortal Dev Days. Uh, the last two, I believe, we've, uh, or at least the last one, we coordinated it with the Sakai community. Um, they have their Dev Days. It's usually in January. Um, they've decided to push it back because uh, during the planning time frame, uh, COVID and its repercussions, uh, things were still up in the air. Uh, so they decided, let's look at June and maybe as an alternative, if open uh, Perio is, uh, you know, more focused on, on uh, online, um, maybe as a complement to that, uh, there'd be a small dev days uh, around the same time or butting up to that, um, where there are some folks who are interested uh, would be able to get together face to face. I've heard Ann Arbor, Michigan being thrown around um, as a location, but again, a lot of this is in um, pre-planning, uh, nothing, nothing solid yet. Uh, but I wanted to let the community know about this, and if you're interested, um, you know, we'll, we'll make some announcements on the mailing list, and certainly we'll cover it again in, in the next briefing. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you guys. One of the best aspects of the portal project for me has always been the community, seeing a lot of you guys face to face. A lot of friendships have been made and, and um, you know, look forward to hanging out. And kind of our last section, oh, we're doing pretty good on time. Our last section is on new training offerings. Uh, so, you know, of course we're Unicon, um, we have our open source uh, support subscriptions that you could um, join to help with the community and your own uPortal services. Uh, we do small projects, usually around installation and upgrades. Uh, we can do other custom work as well. Um, but really for, for those of you who have been around for a while, um, I was thinking how, how could we help you uh, with their current installations. I know with uPortal 5, uh, a lot of people have upgraded, but there's there's been some sticking points. There's been a couple of, of dark corners and um, I've added and, and improved our general training. So if you've recently gone through our big four day training block, um, some of our new subscribers, you're probably in a pretty good place. But if uh, you haven't had training with us since you portal four, or you've had uh, a lot of turnover in your team that handles you portal. Um, I'm, I'm looking at potentially having shorter training sessions. I mean, obviously we'd love for people to engage in, in the large block, but that's, that's sometimes too much time and, and just covers too many of the basics. And you're really looking for how do I configure things a little more um, um, accurately uh, given my particular implementation. Um, there's also different ways to do deployments. We're, we're, we've gone from everything in-house and uh, kind of homegrown uh, to more adoption of Docker. Uh, Kubernetes has come up. Uh, and so we're going to potentially create some training around that. And then our admin tools have kind of been cleaned up a little bit to the point where I feel pretty comfortable that someone who is in charge of not, not the ops team deploying it, but an admin who is managing uPortal can really leverage most of the UI tools and, and do like 95% of their work. Uh, and only rarely do they need to ask um, someone who has access to the server to run scripts. Um, I know some of the smaller services where there's only one or two folks who are in charge of their view portal service and they have their, you know, they're doing ops and development and managing and they have full access. So this might not apply, um, but uh, certainly uh, we, we want to focus on, on those folks who just really need to know what the tools can do and how they can be leveraged. Um, and also, we'll probably do some improvements in there as well in the upcoming year. Um, I'd really like to see uPortal 
kind of move away from requiring someone to have access to the server to really be a web service that can be completely managed um, from the UI. So those are some thoughts. Uh, if you're interested in any of those topics or you have another topic, I'm thinking these are small, like four hour, half day training um, packages that can be pulled together and kind of you know mixed and matched. Um, and we can do a full custom thing as well. So just some things I wanted to share with you. Um, hopefully I piqued your interest with regards to that. Uh, and that wraps up our slide deck. We've still got, uh, what, five, seven minutes. Uh, any questions? Uh, Benita, <laughs> a selfish oh. question. You mentioned about portlets being written as um, web components, but only some portlets. I, I assume there is no such plans for web proxy portlet. It's uh, one of the most complicated ones. You know, that, that's interesting. Um, I have been, um, I have talked to someone who's not a subscriber, mm -hmm. who has a very old version of uPortal that wants to upgrade. And they're, the thing they've, that slowed them down is web proxy v2, the latest web proxy doesn't have all the features that, um, you know, something, I don't know if it was even the original web proxy, I think it was original web proxy, doesn't have. Uh, so there might be um, a chance of looking at that because there, there is a feature, a couple of features that seem to have been dropped. Um, so if we could get some community members to all agree that, yeah, web proxy is, is something we'd really like to see rewritten. Um, yeah, I think that's a possibility. You, you know, drop a message out on the mailing list um, when we when that topic comes up or, or just any time and see if you can get some other folks to to agree that that would be one of the best candidates and we'll make that happen and in our case it's opposite i mean we've invested a lot of into web proxy and you know when web yeah. proxy 2 came out you remember that cast proxy uh, thing wasn't working with them so we together invested a lot of things and even one of the um items in, in U portal 510, I think, that relates to that um, being not picking up proxy, cast proxy parameters. I mean, that was one of the points we discovered together. And uh, yes, yeah. so, OK. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just like I said, if we can get some people to, to buy in, and, and in particular for us, if we can get some subscribers to say, yeah, we, we think this should be one of those that are considered for, for a rewrite. Um, yeah, that would be great. Sandre. Um, okay. If there's no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and wrap up this call. All right. Thank you all for joining. Really appreciate it. And, um, look forward to our next briefing. We won't, be, we'll have them, we'll have them more often than annually. Um, I expect another one early next year. So uh, if I don't talk to you by then, have a great holiday season. Enjoy the rest of 2021, and we'll see you in 2022. Bye, folks. Okay.